and the doors cracked, and there was a guy walking his dog, and I could hear the dog, but I couldn't see the dog, and then I heard the dog sniffing, it comes up to the back door, and I can hear the owner go, what do you smell, boy? What do you smell? What do you smell? And then he finally comes to the crack in the door, and I'm there with my phone, he goes, oh, black guy! And then just books it, so... Uh, thanks for the warm welcome, I guess. That was, uh, am I really that startling? <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Thanks. Thanks. I, uh, it's good to be here. The, I think, like, this stuff kind of brings me back because this is like a really cool place to perform. Uh, I remember the first time I ever did stand up. It was back when I had my first car. It was a black Volvo station wagon, and his name was Denzel Washington. <laughs> and then I got in an accident with Denzel, and the front headlight broke. So from then on, I was just Forrest Whitaker. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Every time I tell that joke in a black room, there's always two women, black women in the back that are like, You leave that boy alone! And I, uh, that's, that's why I do it. This is so much fun. Uh, I, uh, the first show I ever did it was very weird because uh, uh, I didn't perform in front of other comics. Uh, it was at a concert. Uh, this booker came to me and said, Tay Tanner, do you want to open up for rappers? And I was 19 at the time, so I was like, Hell yeah, I want to open up for rappers. What kind of rappers? And he said, oh, you'll see, which is never good. That is, uh, I don't like mysteries about where I'm going. Um, so I decided to investigate myself, you guys. Uh, I opened up for a rap group called the Super Saiyans. It was five black guys from the east side of Detroit that like to dress up like anime characters and rap about anime. Um, and that's cool enough. That's completely my target audience. I was an indoor kid, why wouldn't I? open up for a band that wants to be monsters and demons and angels, but in like a Japanese font. I don't know, but uh, the thing was, it was paid 50 bucks, and I was like, all right, fine, well, that, that seems cool, I, I can do that. They're like, all right, man, all we need you to do is write some anime jokes, so I did. And then uh, they were like, hey man, when you get to the place, uh, the Super Saiyans are gonna have your check. Now, when somebody else is holding your money, I want to be sure that I can find them, right? So I'm like, what do these guys even look like? I couldn't find them online, which is also a bad sign. Uh, <laughs> so I get to the bar, and I'm like, man, what is it? if I was a Super Saiyan, what would I look like? And then I saw them by the bar, it's five just ripped black dudes that were like kind of swaying back and forth like video game characters that haven't been unlocked yet. And I was like, I bet that's them. And I'm like, hey, are you in the band? He's like, yeah, we got some money. I'm like, oh, okay, all right, cool. Uh, all right, so. And then I went up to him, I'm like, so how's this gonna work? He's like, all right, man, all we need you to do is just do your jokes up front, and then we gonna rap. And I'm like, that sounds simple. Uh, and then a half hour goes by, and an hour goes by, and they come and get me in the green room. They say, hey, man, marketing messed up. Uh, none of our fans are here. But if you still want this money, I mean, we're still gonna do this show, so you can just do uh, your anime jokes for whoever's in the bar at the time. And, uh, <laughs> Like, I was really eager to go on, so I was like, all right, why, why not, right? So uh, that is how I told 10 minutes worth of anime jokes to 60 black women on the east side of Detroit, you guys. Uh, yeah, that was the night that I learned that when an older black woman goes, it's okay, baby, it's a lie. It's, it's, it's a lie. <laughs> lying to your face. <laughs> like, I, look, I stand before you, uh, a grown black man. Um, I love anime, I love black women. I would not be who I am today without both of those things. But they mix like Pop-Tarts and soup, you guys. It's, uh, it's just really bad. But, like, like two minutes in, uh, one of them in the front row was just, just shaking her head like this. And I was like, are you okay? She was like, this isn't what Dr. King marched for. I'm like, oh, wow. Oh, no. I hit her right in the culture. Jesus. Yeah, like five minutes in, one of them stood up and she, she was rubbing her chest. She was like, it's okay if you don't finish, baby. You know, why don't you just tell us about your day or something? Like, like she was experiencing pain for me, right? But the best part about that set was uh, when I was all done and I walked off stage, one of them came up and grabbed the mic. She was like, all right, y'all, give it up for Tana. That baby tried, didn't he? I ain't never seen nothing like that. <laughs> Y'all see that effort? You make a great boyfriend. You just don't quit. <laughs> That's good. 
Um, uh, I, I just got finished doing a pretty cool comedy festival in uh, Indiana. It was, uh, Indiana is, is a weird place, cause like, I was in Bloomington, which is like basically Indiana's Ann Arbor, you know? Uh, <laughs> yep, totally, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, like it was, but I, I'm not sure if I like Indiana kindness. I will explain that to you guys. Uh, I, was, I was walking back to my Airbnb, it's two in the morning, it's dark, uh, but there's this trail that leads like, it cuts like a vein through the city, and my Airbnb is right off that, that trail, right? So I feel pretty safe walking home by myself. Uh, I'm walking, and then a older gentleman, probably around like early 30s to me, that's an older gentleman. Right? Um, yeah. Oh, did someone say, wow? You're older than me, get over it. Jesus. All right. <laughs> but, uh, he rolls by me, he's got this red BMX bike with the, the, the handlebars on the, those little bars on the back. Yeah, the pads, I don't know, I, I was a skateboarder, anyway. <laughs> but he's got those on it, and he rolls by me, he's like, hey man, um, uh, what's up? And I'm like, I'm just heading back to my Airbnb. He's like, you one of the comics on the festival? I was like, yeah. And he was like, uh, you alone? And I was like, <laughs> Oh shit, uh -oh. <laughs> like, like all I had on me was my phone and my wallet and my keys and like two grilled cheeses that I had snagged from the bar. And it's one of those Florida moments where you're like, can I kill a man with a grilled cheese? <laughs> I might have to. This dude's gonna get smothered. I like to live, all right? Mm -mm. I will not die in Indiana, I swear to God. <laughs> So, I'm like, I'm like, whoa, man, and, and then he, he goes, oh, I don't want to hurt you, which is exactly what people say before they hurt you. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, what, I was like, what's wrong with you? And he was just like, oh, man, you know, I was just going to give you a ride back to your uh, Airbnb. And I was like, on your bike? And he was like, hell yeah, man. And I was like, what, like front or back? And he was like, well, we can reverse ET this, man. You can just ride on my back. And I was like... I, I still I still didn't trust him, right? So then he pulls out his pocket knife and hands it to me, and I'm like, what is this for? He's like, man, if I do anything fucked up, you can just stab me in the back, bro. Like, I, just, I, just, I just want to help you out, man. And uh, I did it, you guys. It, it shaved like 10 minutes off my time. Uh, but uh, there was this bridge that was next to my Airbnb, and uh, this car rolled across it, and they just saw me on the back of this white dude's bike with a knife like this. Just going about five miles an hour. And whoever they were, they must have been like, that's the weirdest gang initiation I have ever seen. It was, it was crazy. Um, uh, surprising fact about me, I know I seem very calm. I am calm, and that is why I work at a gun store. That is my day job. Uh, some people say, Oh, Tanner, what? Why'd you get that job? Do you like guns? Do you like guns? Uh, no, nah, I just like occasionally telling men no. I get off on it. It's very funny. <laughs> what do you mean I can't have that? I'm sorry, sir, the background. I'm not a lawyer. Anyway, I try again. You know, like, uh, I, like, uh, I like selling guns to the elderly. Because uh, they come in scared, but they leave brave. You ever seen that? I see it all the time, it's great. This one lady came in, she was like, my name's Lily, and my husband died five years ago. Sometimes I hear noises at night, and I'd like to shoot those noises. <laughs> Shh, somebody play some credence, yeah. Right? So, you know, when, when you give an older person a, a weapon, there are some things you have to consider. Uh, am I giving you too much or too little? And I always give them too much, because uh, I don't know what scares you more than somebody who knows how to use a shotgun. How about somebody who knows how to use a shotgun, but it's just all over the place. Just, I mean, God, you know, like uh, uh, one time uh, we, we run like uh, special classes and uh, we ran a class especially for the elderly. And you, uh, when, you, when, you, when you acquire a target and you shoot at it, you have to give them a warning. I'm, this is just legal stuff that you guys, I hope you guys never use, honestly. 
but you're supposed to give them like a leave warning, like I have a gun or like get down, something like that, right? And you can choose whatever you want to yell at the person that you're about to shoot. And the first person in the stall was like, you gotta give them a warning word. And this 79 year old lady picked up that gun. She was like, I aim for the mouth. I was like, oh boy, God. Oh, I really hope you never use that. Jesus Christ. And you were raised in the 20s, right? She was hard out here. Didn't let us have liquor. I aim for the mouth, boy. Like just crazy. But uh, yeah, I, I took Lily out to the, the gun range and uh, I was like, how about we try out a shotgun? And she was like, no, no, I, I played tennis for 20 years. What's, what's your best gun? Uh, so I decided to give her a KSG. Uh, you can Google it if you want. A KSG is a 14 round breaching and entry shotgun for SWAT team members and Serena Williams. These are the only people <laughs> that should ever touch this gun. Like if guns could talk, it'd be like, where is she? Like it's, uh, oh man, now my throat hurts. <laughs> So, you know, I take her out to the range, and I set the target at 10 yards, and then she goes, eh, which means further, an old woman. So I push it out to 20 yards, and she got five in the black from 20 yards out, you guys. She is deadly, all right? And, uh, you know, like any other sale, I turn to her, I'm like, hey, do you like the gun? And she looks down at it, she's like, you know, I'm not a man, but I feel like I got a dick right now. Uh, and that's why they'll never get rid of them, right? <laughs> Boy, um, uh, when you work at a gun store, you get to uh, be around a lot of cops, which just heightens my anxiety. Um, I would say the best part about working with a lot of cops is sometimes they bring their canines in. You know, police dogs are fun. I wish we didn't use them. I, I wish we didn't involve man's best friend in our best kind of bullshit, right? Like, come on, man. It's just a dog. He was born, right? Come on, it's a dog. It's a dog. I guess we could do worse, though. Like, can y'all imagine if we had police monkeys? Oh, my God. Police chases would be fucking primal, man. We gotta run around 75. Get him, Rafiki, get him! How are you supposed to run from something that has, like, like, how are you supposed to fight something that has four fists? I guess is what I'm trying to say. I don't know. Um, this next bit is about childhood, um, which is such a weird turn from guns to childhood. Anyway, <laughs> that's why I need segues, you guys. Uh, but I, uh, I found it very weird, the transition from fifth grade to sixth grade, because in fifth grade we had recess, and in sixth grade they just mixed it. You eat lunch, you go back to learning, you hear? No. No. That's how that was. And uh, uh, I, did, uh, I, I noticed it affected a lot of people in my class. There was a kid named Melvin. Uh, when we were in fifth grade, he would go into the backwoods, and for a half hour after lunch, he would pretend to be a motorcycle. Just <laughs> Like, different sounds. So, like, the bubbly one was like the Harley, and then the yeah, like, that's like the, the motocross one. Just, you know, different noises really got off on that. And then in sixth grade, uh, I noticed, wow, uh, things you do outside are not appropriate inside because watching Melvin pretend to be a motorcycle by a Pepsi machine was about the saddest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, I, I, oh, I was Melvin, you guys. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, I didn't have the worst time, you guys, though. The, the, I think the, uh, the worst time in middle school, fell on uh, uh, my, my best friend in middle school. I went to an all-black middle school. I had an Asian best friend. None of those things are remarkable. <laughs> the remarkable thing is that my Asian friend's name was Young Ho. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it feels like to be an Asian child surrounded by black people. And your name is Young Ho? <laughs> It was rough for young Ho, you guys. Like, even the adults made fun of him. Like, like my friend Gary's mom was just like, what's your friend's name? And I was like, young Ho. And she was like, ha, better than them old hoes I used to fuck with. I was like, oh, come on. Come on. He's trying. He helps us with our homework. He dresses it. Come on. Just 
give them a chance, you know. Uh, you guys. I, uh, I, have, uh, I have my medical card. Is anybody else in here uh, smoke weed at all? Yeah, you at the back there? You know? For real? Or are you just like, I want to part of that? She's got rainbows on her sleeves. Of course she smokes weed. <laughs> my name is Princess Diana. If you've never listened to Fleetwood Mac, get the hell out of here. I, I, I know exactly what you're about, all right? Like, I don't know. Legal weed is cool. I don't think it's going to fix the roads, you guys. Know. I don't think <laughs> that's just some bullshit to get a pass. They just, they just want people docile, you know? Um, like, like, I really appreciate that Ann Arbor has a lot of dispensaries because uh, uh, they have real soft names, right? Like, uh, the, the one across the street from me is called Bloom Health Wellness. It's uh, staffed entirely by women, and uh, whenever there's a line and I walk in, they're like, oh, sorry that there's a line. Uh, would you like milk or coffee or tea? I'm like, I don't even have milk right now. Um, that'd be great, right? And they got this bucket full of Twix bars because they know I like chocolate and choose inside. It's, it's just, it's real fun. It's real fun. Um, but uh, that once you go to like different dispensaries in different cities, uh, shit changes, you guys. Like uh, Sometimes I go to a dispensary off 8 Mile in Detroit called House of Dank. <laughs> and, uh, there, I am greeted by a, uh, the, the most gravelly just, just parking lot. It's this, the, there's holes in it. The parking lot's like freaking Swiss cheese. It sucks. Uh, uh, there's, there's like metal detectors. About the only good thing is that the security guard is always like, nice hairline, blood. And I'm like, thank you. Thank you. It's so nice. It's so nice. Um, I, uh, me and my grandpa got our medical cards around the same time, and, uh, yeah, I, uh, sometimes I would smoke with my grandpa, you guys. It was very fun, because uh, my grandpa was born in the 30s, uh, he was a surgeon for most of his life, and when you're a surgeon, you can't really, you know, just be chiefing like that, right? You can't just, just, <laughs> alright, let's check out this loop. Like, this, this, this is a ridiculous way to live, right? So uh, it was really fun to watch him uh, just smoke 21st century weed and just get silly, you know? Like I'd go over to his house and he'd be like, I'm tired of watching the news. Let's, let's watch some cartoons. I'm like, what kind of cartoons you want to watch? Like, let's watch the Powerpuff Girls. I'm like, oh, really? They love the Powerpuff Girls. He, he has a song for you, he'd be like, Blossom, Commander Gator, she wears red bubbles. She like animals, a cute shit, buttercup. Yeah, that one's a dyke. Go Powerpuff, say good day. Bow, bow, bow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I like that y'all forgave him for calling the green one a dyke, because he, he taught me how to ride a bike, right? I can't get mad at him for that. The best part was when he would like, he'd, he'd just lay back and he'd start making observations about the show. He'd be like, <sighs> you know, we've been watching this for about an hour. This bitch ain't got no hands. <laughs> I didn't hold on to shit. I just thinking, just, just, don't, make, don't make no sense. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get out of here on this one. Um, you guys, I, uh, is, is everybody in here like the band Earth, Wind, and Fire at all? Anybody? Okay, great, you're gonna love this joke. Uh, so, so my dad's favorite band is Earth, Wind, and Fire, you guys. He, uh, he's absolutely in love with them. Uh, a couple years ago, he took me to go see Earth, Wind, and Fire, and he was like, son, we should go see a band you want to go see. And I decided to test my dad's patience, you guys. I was like, hey, dad. Do you want to go to your first death metal show? <laughs> and like any black father, he was like, why the hell would we do that? And I was like, I'll pay for parking and tickets. He's like, my oh boy. So, uh, <laughs> so we went, he had an experience. He was like, who are we gonna go see? And I was like, we're gonna go see Skinless. Uh, Skinless is a Canadian death metal band. Uh, I will try to describe their music. Uh, Earth, Wind and Fire sounds and tastes like mom's home cooking, right? Uh, skinless, skinless sounds like a phone call at 2 a.m. and there's a gravelly voice and he's like, we got your mom tied up. We got wet hands. And, 
and we got knives, you better come. And that's, that's, that's what skinless sounds like. It sounds, sounds like a hostage situation. Like, like, I really, like, it's the soundtrack to a knife fight, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, but uh, I pick up my dad from his office. He's like 6'8", 280. My dad's huge, right? So I pick him up from his office, and my dad's wearing a large yellow raincoat. So I'm already with it. And I'm like, well, what are you wearing the raincoat for? He's like, I saw their videos. They spit on people. <laughs> Earth, Wind, and Fire never spit on anybody. Right, so we get to the front gates of the music festival, and the security guard notices my dad in a large yellow raincoat. Not very uh, difficult spot, just a sea of white children, and then a black man in a raincoat. Right? <laughs> so he like looks at him. He's just like, "Sir, uh, it's pretty hot out today. You don't really need all that coat." And my dad looked him up and down. He's like. Now, this is for me, and that's all you need to worry about. And that's the most gangster shit my dad's ever said in his entire life. Like, you guys need to understand, like, my dad wakes up at seven to iron his socks, he went to private school, he collects flashlights, which is so annoying. You guys remember when we had that power outage in, like, 03? Oh, you should just sit, my dad was just, like, the big, just a big gloater, just going down the block like, anybody need flashlights? That's too damn bad! Like this... <laughs> an asshole. Anyway. But uh, my dad, uh, he's, he's irritated, he's hot. He found out that there's no coffee at metal shows. How am I supposed to stay awake for the whole concert now? Yeah. Right? Uh, so then, uh, he's, he's, he's very miserable, he's walking right uh, past me, and then he sees something in the distance. He goes, son, What's that? I'm like, oh, Dad, that's the mosh pit. That's where, uh, that's where fans of music go and punch and kick each other in the face. <laughs> it's a good time if you can handle it. And my dad just starts running towards the mosh pit. I'm like, Dad, what are you doing? He's like, I gotta go see these white boys hit each other. And he just gets, <laughs> just gets right in the middle of this pit and gets laid out. And all I hear my dad goes, oh, God, what do I do? What do I do? And I was like, Dad, you hit him back. And right when I said that, he just exploded out of the pit. He looked at his fist and he was like, this is why we came here, Curtis. This is why we came here. Uh, Y'all ever seen Shaq beat up Kiss? It was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, we got back in the car. My dad's hyperventilating. I'm like, you okay? And he's like, you know, son, I had a lot of doubts about tonight. But that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun, because, you know, I have not hit a white person since 1972. <laughs> I'll be damned. That was, that was great. I feel my heartbeat. I feel alive, right? And, like, I'm a curious person, so I'm like, Dad, who's the last white person you ever hit? And he was like, oh, Mitt Romney. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. Y'all remember what I say he went to private school, right? Yeah, he went to Cranbrook, and uh, my dad was Mitt Romney's uh, high school bully. That's right, I came from those moments. Yeah. 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 You know, I had some questions, I was like, so how do, you, how do you bully a politician's son? Like, what did you do? And he was like, I just used to take his backpack and throw it in the pond and be like, oh, I can't swim, you, you go get it, you know. <laughs> This is pretty light, and uh, you know, I don't know, when my dad told me that, I didn't really believe him at first. That's like if your mom's like, I spanked Oprah, I need pictures. <laughs> so, uh, a couple years later, we're at a Cranbrook fundraiser, and who should be there but Mitt Romney, right? My dad goes, check this out. He walks up to Mitt Romney, and he taps him on the shoulder, Mitt Romney turns around, he's like, oh, Curtis, it's been years. And my dad's just like, yeah, it's been years for me too, uh, I just thought you should know that I voted for Obama. And then he just went to get a All right, you guys, you've been so much fun. Have a good night. Have a good night. Tease for you, but he came all the way here from Chicago, and uh, I told him that I could pay him a hundred bucks, and I only have seventeen in my wallet, so I need you guys to at least applaud really loud for him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen.
stop clapping very fast. Thank you. <laughs> All right, this is nice. Over there from Jimmy. 